Okay, I want to thank everyone for coming to my webinar today. My name is Amber Brown, and I am the North American Sales Director for Move Solutions. And today, um, this has been a very highly requested webinar, is preventing bridge failure with remote monitoring. So this is a webinar I've been very excited about. A lot of people have been requesting it. And I really want to dive into um, remote monitoring uh, with our sensors and how you can use our sensors to prevent bridge failures. So who is Moo Solutions? I know a lot of you guys have been to my last webinar, but I really just wanna touch briefly on who we are and what we do. So. Move Solutions designs solutions for monitoring any type of civil infrastructure. So today we will be speaking about bridges, but we are involved in all sorts of civil infrastructure, bridges, buildings, uh, railways, dams, um, mining. So we are not just on bridges, but we are on all sorts of infrastructure. And what we have really done is focus on the dynamic side of structural health monitoring and understanding you know, how that structure is behaving and being able to prevent failures from happening. So uh, today is preventing bridge failures, but you know, we can prevent failures on the rail tracks, um, in buildings. So as we know, um, this day and age, we have a lot of failing infrastructure. That's So that's what we really focus on. Um, I really want to talk about the potential of smart structural health monitoring. So the world we live in today, uh, everything is becoming smart. So we have smart cars. We have cars that are driving themselves. We have smart thermostats. Every day when I leave the house, my thermostat resets the temperature so that I can save energy and money. I go to work every day uh, and I wear my smartwatch, which, you know, helps me track my activity and gives me a glimpse into my personal health. So infrastructure and especially with bridges should be no different. Uh, we're living in an age where we have the tools and technology to have smart infrastructure and smart structural health monitoring. And how we can do that is by using our smart wireless sensors um, that are very easy to use. They're low cost. Um, it's a smart installation. So you can simply install these sensors onto your structure. And as soon as you uh, plug in the gateway, you're already streaming data. So it's a very plug and play system and you have the data um, at your fingertips at all time. Uh, you have years of autonomy because they're very low power, they're battery powered. So you can simply install them. And I mean, you're probably not going to forget about them, but you could if you wanted to. And on the other side of things, you know, we have a great system for remote management. It makes your asset management extremely easy and efficient because we have all of the algorithms to understand the data that you're receiving. We have the remote management tools so that you can set up alerts and thresholds so that you're alerted when there's a problem. Um, you, you don't have to constantly check the dashboard. And what that gives you is a total cost reduction because you know from start to finish, the sensors are low cost. They're easy to install, which keeps the you know installation and maintenance costs extremely low. And it gives you um, advanced maintenance planning. So, you know, in the case of bridges, you're able to understand as soon as things start degrading, as soon as you start seeing problems before you actually see that physical change using our dynamic sensors. So that makes it uh, way, you know, more cost effective to um, perform maintenance on your structure before you have huge problems, before you have a failure, before you're rebuilding bridges. So the, the overall smart structural health monitoring is a great asset management plan. And it's to you know, prevent the failures, save lives, and save money. 
So I'm not going to really get into the sensors too much. Um, I will just briefly talk about them because I'm going to be speaking about them, um, you know, in the actual how to prevent uh, bridge failure. So we have uh, we have four sensors in total. So we have a tilt meter, which is a static sensor. And then we have three dynamic sensors, two of which are for structural health monitoring and one that is more for um, construction and preventing damage um, you know, around construction sites. So the tilt meter is a static sensor that's measuring you know, if the structure moves. And then we have the structural health monitoring accelerometer and DEX sensor. And these are our dynamic sensors to understand, you know, deeply the health of your bridge. Um, you're able to, to monitor it in the short term and long term, perform modal analysis, understand the dynamic displacements. And then we have the vibrometer. So this is a sensor that can help you on your construction sites to understand the PPV and understand if your construction is affecting um, you know, either your construction site or things around your construction site. So it could be buildings, it could be bridges, um, whatever the infrastructure is around your construction. And then we have analog and digital nodes. So these are a, it's a node so that you can connect third party probes into the system. And this is really important, especially in, you know, preventing failures and understanding what's happening to your structure. Um, it's not just looking directly at your bridge, but it's looking at what's happening around the bridge. So whether it's the weather, whether it's the grounds around the bridge, um, there's many factors that play into, you know, what's happening with your infrastructure or your asset. And so by using the nodes and adding in more third-party sensors, you can really get a full picture of what's going on with your bridge. And then we have the gateway, which is the communication device so that all of these sensors can communicate um, and send the data to our dashboard where you can see the data, where it has been processed using the algorithms and where it's going to alert you if there's a problem. So typical reasons for structural health monitoring um, on bridges in particular. So I, I went over this slide in the next one um, previously, um, but I, I wanna kind of hit on it. If you haven't seen my Monitoring 101 webinar, I definitely recommend getting on our website and checking it out. Um, there, I really dive into the difference between static and dynamic monitoring and you know the importance of structural health monitoring. Um, but in this case of bridges, you know, the main reason to, to use structural health monitoring equipment is to, uh, there's, there's different, you know, factors. So one, the main one is you want to prevent structural failure, which is what the webinar today is about. But you also want to improve maintenance. So it's not just a you're going to put them on and prevent structural failure. You know, there's a roadmap to preventing the failure. And one of them is improving your maintenance plan. So you are able to do that with our sensors by detecting the damage in the early stages and enabling a proactive response instead of a reactive response. So you're able to lower the costs um, because you're able to fix the damage, you know, before it's so severe, before you're shutting down, you know, the entire bridge, before you're replacing parts of it or replacing the entire bridge. Um, and then you're able to boost the lifetime and safety of the bridge because you have continuous observation um, and data. It's also able to give you, um, you know, the data to understand how your bridge is performing. So, even if you have a new structure, say you have a new structure and you're using new materials um, or new components on that structure, you can see how they're performing over time. So it's not just for you know, these old structures that you want to prevent failures. It's also for new structures to understand how they're performing over time to also prevent failures, but to hopefully boost the lifetime of the structures instead of having them 
you know, last for 10 years without maintenance. Maybe you can have them last for 20, 30, 40 years without performing significant maintenance on these structures. And lastly, you know, the, the most important part is to, you know, prevent critical situations with breakdowns, with failures and save lives, save money, um, and yeah, reduce the over overall cost. So there's two types of monitoring uh, that we focus on and, you know, pretty much all of our customers focus on, you know, with their asset management. And that's the short-term monitoring, which is the real-time monitoring, and the long-term monitoring. So the difference between the two is the short-term real-time monitoring is understanding the, the right now and setting up the alerts and thresholds that you typically set up so that you can get alerted if there's a problem, if there's a movement, if you're seeing changes in that structure, getting an alert so that you can immediately check things out, do an inspection, send people on site, shut down the traffic. And then we have the long-term monitoring. So this is the statistical analysis using things like modal analysis and trend studies to understand if that structure is slowly changing over time and understanding you know, if, if and why it's changing over time and trying to prevent um, changes in the structure that you would pick up on say a total station. So the long-term monitoring is really taking a deeper look into that structure and understanding these parameters that are changing before you have that that physical change that you would pick up on, you know, that short-term uh, monitoring where you're getting alerts. So getting into the remote bridge monitoring and how to prevent the failures. Um, so as we know, we have everyday bridges, viaducts, they are stressed by different loads. Um, the, the structures are made from different materials, they're in different environments, um, and as they age, there are certain parameters that are critical to monitor to ensure, you know, the safety of that structure. So the fundamental parameters to, mo to monitor and you know, what we monitor for are the dynamic parameters, and this is what we're very focused on at Move Solutions, which are the dynamic displacements, the accelerations, and then also the static parameters, which are the inclinations and static displacements, the modal parameters, such as the frequencies, shapes, and damping of the structure, and then the environmental parameters, so the air temperature, uh, the humidity, the wind, and the geotechnical parameters. So the settlements, the groundwater. Um, so we're really focused on the structure itself in the static and dynamic sense and the environmental and geotechnical. So what's happening under the structure, what's happening around the structure. And we the, the sensors that we use that I briefly talked about earlier are the DEC sensor, which is a patented technology by Move Solutions. This is understanding the dynamic displacement and understanding how that dynamic displacement changes over time and using that data to understand if something is happening in that structure that you can't visually see. You can't pick up on a visual inspection. And then we use the accelerometers. So our structural health monitoring accelerometers, which is the only synchronized wireless accelerometer on the market. And what we can do with this is perform the modal analysis to understand the structure in the long term as well. And then we have a tilt meter to understand if the structure is moving and how much it is permanently moving. And then we have all of those third party probes that I mentioned, such, such as the strain gauges, crack meters, temperature sensors that can be connected with the analog or digital node. So as you, I'm sure everyone on this webinar is aware, there are many different types of bridges and we, this is just some of them, um, but we, we try to focus on having a solution for every type of bridge because with different types of bridges, as you can see, there are different types of problems. So on the left picture, you can see, you know, there are cracks forming in the concrete, 
The center picture is showing you a bridge that collapsed from Bridge Scour. On the right, it's the bridge that collapsed in Pittsburgh just from poor, poor maintenance. The bridge was so degraded that it just simply gave out one day. And with all of the different types of problems, we have the different types of monitoring. Um, every bridge is different and we are very solution focused at Move Solutions where we want to give you the tools and solutions to really take a look at every different type of bridge. We don't have a one size fits all solution. Um, we really try to customize it you know, based on your problems the bridge that you have, um, we try to give you the solutions for. And two, which I had already mentioned, are the short-term and the long-term monitoring and the static and the dynamic monitoring. And as I mentioned, if you didn't see Structural Health Monitoring 101, my last webinar, I would definitely check it out um, where I really dive deeply into the difference between the short-term, long-term, static and dynamic monitoring. So to show you, I really wanted to show you guys um, the setups that we have for bridges. So we have two setups where it's the basic and full setup. And then on top of that, we, we look at your individual problems and give you the tools to solve each individual problem. But the great thing about Move Solutions and our sensors is that they're very scalable. So we understand and everyone knows that it would be impossible to you know, do a full setup of our sensors on every single bridge in the entire world. It just wouldn't be possible. There aren't the funds for it and we understand that and that's why we have a very scalable solution. So what we have first is the basic setup. So this is great if you have, say you want, you know, a maintenance plan. You have a certain percentage of your bridges that maybe are in poor, maybe you're in fair condition, and you want to understand where do I need to start performing the maintenance? Where are the most problems? Which ones are safe? Which ones are not safe? So uh, a great option would be to start with the basic setup. So this is, I like to use the example of your smartwatch. You know, this is uh, understanding your heart rate on a daily basis, um, understanding your activity levels. And sometimes the, the smartwatch will actually alert you to problems. So in this case, it would be using two decks per span and one tiltmeter per peer, so, or pile. So understanding, you know, just the overall view of the structure. How is it performing in the short term with the tilt meters, in the long term or short term with the deck sensors? Now, say you're monitoring the structure, and in the example of a smart smartwatch, it alerts you that maybe there's a change in your heart rate, maybe there's something going on with your heart. So you go to the doctor and you maybe get an MRI or whatever testing they do. That would be the full setup. So this is really taking a very close look and understanding of your structure. So if you start with the, the basic setup and you see that it's not performing the way you intended it to perform, perhaps things are changing, you're seeing a change in the frequencies over time and the displacements that you're, you're showing that there's movement in the bridge from the tilt meters, then this is a good opportunity to add more sensors and move into a full setup. Or if you have a bridge that you know there are problems and you wanna just monitor it very closely, it's a great time to use the full setup. So this is using the two decks per span to understand the dynamic displacements. Um, and then the two tilt meters per pile to understand the inclinations if they're moving, but then adding four accelerometers per span to do the modal analysis and then adding uh, two tilt meters per span as well for the inclination of the span to really take a deeper look into the monitoring. And as I mentioned before, we have the real-time monitoring. So this is getting that early warning, getting an alert on your phone, on your computer, on your iPad, whatever it may be, telling you that there is something in the short term going on with your bridge. So 
Perhaps you have your tilt meter set up on threshold and the bridge has moved and it's going to alert you immediately. Um, with the dynamic monitoring, you could see um, you know, a huge variation in the frequencies and it's going to alert you. Whatever the case may be, um, we have that early warning, which is great for preventing failures because you're able to immediately shut down traffic, shut down the bridge, go physically to the bridge in whether you're inspecting it, trying to find the problems. And then we have the long-term monitoring. So this is the statistical analysis and using the trends over time to understand if there's something changing in your structure before you actually have that physical change that would be picked up on this previous slide. Now, as I mentioned before, we have many types of bridges which have different types of problems. So we have the basic setup and we have the full setup, but on top of that, we have many other tools um, to use for your specific problems with your specific needs on your the various types of bridges that you have. So one of them would be movement between bridge components, which is a very common um, problem. Well, it's not a problem. All bridges move between the components, but it's something that, um, you know, many people want to monitor for to understand, is that bridge moving between, you know, the spans, um, the correct amount? Is it moving too much? Is it moving too little? And then also on the vertical as well, the, the bridge, maybe you want to monitor the bearings of the bridge and understand um, if they're performing the way they were intended to perform. So a way that we can do that is to use our analog node um, connected to a crack meter. So if you want to monitor the spans, so whether they're moving horizontally uh, the way that they were meant to move and designed to move, you can simply put a crack meter in between the two components and understand how much they're moving, um, you know, especially with the temperature variations. Um, and then if you want to monitor the vertical, so understanding, you know, it, whether it's your bearings, whatever the case may be, how much it's moving in the vertical sense, you can use a crack meter on the vertical as well. And you can connect them into the dashboard using our nodes. You can also use a tilt beam connected over. Uh, say, say you have the two spans, you want to use a tilt beam to connect the two spans to understand uh, if they're moving in this sense. And then we have uh, steel structures. So the steel structures have their own types of problems um, that you may want to monitor for. And one of them is, you know, the temperature using temperature sensors and strain gauges. So you may want to understand the um, the tensional state of the steel and it, you can use the strain gauges connected to our analog node to understand that. Next we have uh, cables. So you may have a cable stay bridge or a suspension bridge. And in both cases, you may want to understand um, how the cables are performing because as you know, with the cable, with a cable stay or suspension bridge, um, it's extremely vital that the cables are performing how they were intended to perform and make sure they are, you know, structurally safe and sound because that is, you know, basically what's holding up the entire structure. And in this case, we can actually add accelerometers directly onto the cables to understand in the short term and long term how those cables are performing, um, if the, the tension of the cables has changed over time, um, or if you know immediately there's something wrong with the tension of the cable. Next, and the final problem that I will be going over today, which we have many, many more problems, but I can't hit them all in a 30 minute webinar, is the problem of bridge scour. So, I'm sure a lot of people on this webinar are aware that bridge scour is one of the leading causes of uh, structural failure in bridges. And I don't even believe just in the United States, we have here in the United States, but I actually think it's worldwide. Um, there's a huge problem with bridge scour. And what bridge scour is, this video is great to show, is 
The hydrodynamic scour is when you have flooding in a river and what it's doing is eroding the, the um, sediment away from around the piles under the bridge. And this happens because of the velocity of the water changes and starts eroding that away. This is something that, and then overall just, you know, affects the integrity of the structure because you don't have the sediment holding the piles in that was originally holding them in. So this is a, a huge problem and it's actually a really hard problem to fix. And there are many laws and I think every single DOT in the United States is affected by this because they have to physically go out, inspect the structure. And even with the systems in place, there are still failures from bridge scour. So as you can see, this is kind of showing you up from above uh, what it looks like when you have these floods and the velocity of the water changes and starts eroding that riverbed away. And how we can solve it. So we can't solve the actual scour problem, which is, you know, removing the sediment. And there's really no good way to understand the sediment around the piles because as the water is eroding it away, the sediment actually fills the holes back up. So if you have, you know, a monitoring plan where you're kind of measuring the riverbed uh, from a certain point to understand, you know, if it's degrading or not, it doesn't always work because the this the sediment is washing away, but it's also filling back up, but it's not filling back up in the same way that it used to be. So it's a much weaker sediment around the piles. So a way that we can monitor is uh, not just determining the erosion, um, but saying whether it's present and whether it's developing or not. So we want to understand, okay, we know there's bridge scour, but is it is it getting worse and is it, is it affecting the integrity of the structure? And how we can do that is by monitoring the structure itself and the piles. So on the deck, you would want to install the, at a minimum of four accelerometers to monitor the frequencies and torsional shapes and understand the modal analysis of the structure. And then also we want to add accelerometers onto the piles of the structure because as the, the structure changes, so as the, the riverbed is washing away, the structure is changing and the frequencies are changing because you actually have more of the structure exposed um, and that frequency is going to change because now the structure is performing differently. So by using the accelerometers and the modal analysis on both the spans and the piles and adding in our tilt meters to understand if it's physically moving, our deck sensors to understand the dynamic displacement, we can do an overall view of understanding if that scour is uh, increasing, if that structural integrity is starting to change on the structure. And that is actually all the time that I have today. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for attending the webinar. Um, I really appreciate it. I'll be doing more webinars. I'm doing a series of them, uh, really touching on the main problems with infrastructure and how we can help you guys solve those problems. So thank you so much for your time, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.